Oh. Das, das oh. Oh, der, oh, Chat. Der, oh, das, da müssen wir das, kurz mal rein. Wir gucken ja die ganze Zeit äh, uns meistens Simrix an. Ich habe hier gerade bei YouTube ein Video vorgeschlagen gekriegt, da redet jemand über sein, ähm, über eine Flight Sim. Und ich glaube, das ist äh, noch mal ein bisschen krasser. Oh, oh. Wir müssen, wir müssen kurz mal gucken. My pride and joy, my home flight simulator, but as my partner likes to call it, the room where I go, she, she doesn't get it. We're gonna have a look at each part of the sim with a few tips from what I've learned at the end of the video. The flight simulator I've built here, for me, must do two things. Combat flight simulation such as DCS, and of course, GA style simulation in the form of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Keep that in mind as I run through it. Let's start off with the question I get asked all the time. What screens are you running? Well, these are Hisense A7H, three of them to be exact. There's a few reasons I bought these. One, they're 4K. Two, they're 120 hertz, not the I can never use that with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Three, the variable refresh rate. And four, they've got really good viewing angles, which is important when the screens are so big and you're so close to them at the same time. Drawbacks might be they get a bit hot and they're slightly reflective, so not the best in a brightly lit room. The reason I went with 55 inch was to get as close as I could to a one-on-one like a one-to-one -one experience. Meaning that what I'm looking at on screen almost... <lacht> da habe ich mir auch gedacht bei 48 Zoll, aber da hat auch jeder gesagt, dass ich das so einer da hatte. Ich verstehe dich, ich verstehe dich. Ich würde auch noch vielleicht, also... It feels like life size as such. There will be a future video about monitors coming soon, so watch out for that. Now we have the screens out of the way, let's talk about the actual rig itself. This is the next level racing Flight Stand Pro and Flight Seat Pro connected together as one cockpit okay. and then made a custom deck and screwed onto the top of the base so i can fit everything i need on there and it'll also accommodate the yoke which is quite long and that brings me onto the yoke now my yoke is a semi-onic but what you can see here is the brunner csl e i'm currently testing and reviewing this with the video due out in the next few weeks and it's going to be something you don't want to miss, believe me. Then we have the throttle quadrant, the king of throttle quadrants, in a sense. It's the Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant. It's just so versatile. As a consumer grade throttle, I don't believe there's anything else that can match the... Ich dachte, ich dachte schon, wir als Simracer haben ja richtig einen an der Klatsche, aber das macht ja nochmal ein ganz anderes Fass auf hier. <lacht> Was ist hier los? Versatility of this. One of the best purchases I've ever made. Let's talk about rudders. Believe it or not, I'm still using the Thrustmaster T-Flight rudder pedals. When I started this build, I didn't realize how essential good rudder pedals are. So they're definitely on the upgrade list. If I've learned anything here, it's don't cheap out on your rudder pedals. If you have any recommendations for an upgrade, let me know in the comments. Now to the combat flight side. Currently I'm running the Thrustmaster Warthog. I just love the Warthog. I, I love it for its build quality. I have since tested some other joystick options that I may be moving to soon, but for now the Warthog is solid and I just love it. So then we've got this little beauty, the Verpo control panel. Used for both Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS, <laughs> the quality and the finish of this is superb. Completely unmatched by any other button box in the industry. I've got a review on it, so check back in the channel for that one. Next, I have the Stream Deck Plus. Now, I use this predominantly for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I use it for adjusting views and bringing up Flow Pro, but it can do way more than that, like way, way more. On a side note, I did a video on Flow Pro, and if you want to make Microsoft Flight Simulator instantly better, then go and check that out. Let's talk about the audio. Now, this comes with a little tip or a takeaway. If you want to up the immersion level of your simulation, have your radio come through the headset and the sound come through a set of speakers. Now, splitting the audio like this makes you feel more like you're in the plane and 
when Beyond okay. ATC gets released. Game changer. Drop me a comment if you'll be picking up Beyond ATC. So I have my speakers of Logitech Z200 mounted to the underside of the wooden deck on either side. This created a nice separation right and left and the speakers have their own volume knob which I highly recommend. It's just super, super handy. I then run the Razer Black Shark V2 Pros. Comfiest wireless headset I can find. I never get sweaty in them. I can wear them for hours and the battery lasts something like 18 to 20 hours which is absolutely insane. One of the best purchases I've made. Now to these guys. Probably the cheapest thing in a rig, but one of the more important ones. These are acoustic pin boards from my local hardware store. What they do is block out all of the crap, cabling, anything in view of the rig or behind the screens. They also give me a sense of like stepping into Ach so, lol. Ich dachte, er hat so einen kleinen Raum. Okay. Do something. So I'd highly recommend this if you've got the room. Next on the list. Ja, du, ich highly recommende das auch, aber ich kann dir ganz ehrlich sagen, also ich würde es auch gern machen, aber fuck my life, Kabel sind einfach Kabel, die kannst du nicht verschwinden lassen. This is the butt kicker gamer pro. A butt kicker or some sort of haptic oh. device for any flight sim setup, <laughs> you just can't go wrong. I mean, here with the butt kicker pro, there's not really much difference between the pro and the standard version, but you know, I'd highly, highly recommend some sort of haptic feedback system for your flight sim rig. I also have this 8 inch tablet mounted on a tablet mount that I found on Amazon. This links up with Simbox and I use it for maps mainly. Check out Simbox if you haven't already. It's a super useful little app and the tablet is a Samsung Galaxy. Now for the... Br <coughs> Jesus. Mario, give me also. Let's come. Now for no Paul Schneider, it's in my back. <laughs> for the brains of the operation, the PC. Hidden behind the screens, it's a custom built, thank you Toby, AMD Ryzen 7800X3D with an NVIDIA 4080. And yes, it does run triple 4K quite well. I did a full video on this, so check out the channel if you're interested. Where have I wasted That's right, money long You know, we all make mistakes when we're trying to build these kind of things up. Firstly, I used to have triple 32 inch monitors. I had the money at the time and the room to go bigger. I'm not sure why I decided to go with 32s, but it was a mistake. The bigger 55 inch monitors completely, completely transformed. That's my really true. The only drawback is it can get quite hot in the room. Kennt ihr das, wenn ihr, ihr habt, also jetzt mal wirklich, ne? Ihr guckt euch jetzt beispielsweise das an und sagt euch so, ja, Dizzy, Alter, das ist schon schick, ne? Jetzt gucke ich mir das an und denke mir so, boah, Alter, das sieht ja richtig scheiße aus. Also nicht von der Hardware, sondern wie es aufgeräumt ist. Also versteht ihr, was ich meine? Weil jetzt denke ich mir auch so, ja, könntest du eigentlich nochmal alles neu verkabeln, machst dir so schicke Wände dahin und dann äh, sieht das halt alles ein bisschen besser aus. Jo, wenn das nicht so riesig wäre, dann würde ich das jetzt nochmal angehen, ne? Vielleicht irgendwann mal, mal gucken. So I always have to have a fan or the aircon running. My rudder pedals were also a mistake, in a way. And it's a mistake I still need to fix. Does, um, does anybody know when the honeycomb rudders will be shipping? Cheap HDMI cables. Don't do it. Just don't. These cause me headaches for weeks. Most of the manufacturer specs on these cheap cables are just, to be blunt, full of shit. Not all HDMI cables are equal. That brings me to my next point. Don't coil up the HDMI cables. Use the shortest HDMI cable you can. For some reason, I think this causes some sort of interference. Don't plug your USBs into your PC. Get a powered USB hub or two if you need it and just take the stress off of your PC and your power supply. Wie, wir sollen die, die kürzesten Kabel nehmen? Haben wir! 10 Meter! <laughs> 10 Meter sind verbaut. Keine Ahnung, was das kostet, aber das sieht super interessant aus. Ich hätte jetzt wirklich nicht äh, gedacht, dass äh, Flight Sim, also ich wusste immer, dass Flight Sim sehr, sehr populär ist und auch ein sehr großes Ding, aber dass die auch hardware-technisch mittlerweile schon so weit sind, das ist echt krass. Also das ist wirklich, äh, das, sah, das sah sehr, sehr gut aus. Also sehr schön und auch ansprechend. Nicht, da, nicht dass ich jetzt unbedingt fliegen wollen würde, aber das sah schon sehr auch ästhetisch aus. Das sah wirklich ästhetisch aus. Wo ich sage, doch, das ist wirklich ein sehr schönes Rig. Es war alles schön angeordnet, die Tischplatte, ne? das Ding in der Mitte zum Steuern, 1249. Gut, dann hat es ein bisschen mehr gekostet. Das sah sehr ordentlich aus, ja. Irgendwann mal, Chat. Da ist euch. Irgendwann mal so zwei, drei Tage alles ganz in Ordnung und ordentlich hier. 
irgendwann mal, wenn ich eine Idee habe, wie ich das hier umsetzen kann. 